Fourthly, if we're to have the mind of Christ and to think like Jesus, we do have to have a mind that is characterized by obedience. What I've called from this passage, sacrificial obedience. And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. I'll just say this and move on to my last point. Christian life is a life that is a calling to obedience. We are to obey God. We are to obey Christ and His commands. We are to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's part of being a servant, as I said just a minute ago. To be a servant, you have to do what the Master says to do. You're not the boss. You don't tell Him what He's to do. You don't even tell Him what, you're, what you'll do. You just do like the Isaiah did. He said, here I am, Lord. Send me. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to serve? That's, that's a willing heart. That's an obedient spirit. Now, we may like to think we, we do some of the things God asks us to do. Man, sometimes he just asks too much. Well, partial obedience is really having no obedience at all. Jesus was perfectly, fully obedient to the will of the Father, even if it meant death, even the death of the cross. That's the example we're to follow. Serving God means we lose our life. Then we lose our life. Every one of us ought to consider ourselves as expendable for the cause of Christ. Because we know if our life comes in here, here on earth, it begins anew forever in heaven. There's no price we can pay here on earth that's bigger than the reward we'll receive in heaven for being obedient to do exactly what God has called us to do. Have a mind characterized by obedience, sacrificial obedience, and you'll have the mind of Christ. Now, lastly, the thing I want to say is that if we're to think like Jesus, have a mind like Christ, we are to have a mind that's focused <coughs> on glorifying God. <coughs> Again, this says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given a name which is above every name, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, those in heaven, those on the earth, those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I read all that to get to the last line. To the glory of God the Father. Now, while Jesus was here on earth, his whole mindset was to bring glory to God. Glory to the Father. Any glory that he might receive was received or accepted that God the Father, he said in an example for all of us, might be glorified. He even saw his death on the cross as a glorification because it was being obedient to what God had called him to do. I've referred to this even recently in times past, but in John 17, this great high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed on behalf of those who would follow him, it begins, John 17, 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son also may glorify you. If you have given him authority over all flesh, or as you have, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, I have glorified you on earth. And how did you do that? I have finished the work which you have given me to do. Now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Here's what I want to say on this. 
It seems like the world is running after worldly glory, worldly acclaim, worldly fame. If you get glory first, if you get recognition first, if you get the accolades first, if fame comes your way first, meaning before it comes to God, <coughs> you're not living as Jesus lived. Now there's going to come a time that we receive glory. When we get to heaven and our face shines with the glow of Christ and we are wearing our, our white robe and a crown of gold is placed upon our head, that victor's crown, of course the Bible indicates we'll lay it then at Jesus' feet, we are going to receive a measure of glory. But our goal in life ought to be to glorify Jesus, glorify God, glorify the moving and power of the Holy Spirit first. And let, take, let God take care of the rest later on. If you seek glory first, you won't be glorifying God. God won't bless you and that glory you receive will be only temporary. But if you will seek to glorify God first, you will receive glory later. And the glory you will receive will be forever. That's having the mind of Christ. Now I'll ask you this question as we close. Being honest before the Lord, do you think, does your mind function do you think like the rest of the world? Do you have the mind of the world? Or do you think, does your mind function? Do you have the mind of Christ? The success with which you live the Christian life depends on having the mind of Christ. Let God transform your minds today that you may, may be used mightily of God and glorify His name. Father, we thank You for this time this morning. Lord, I praise You and thank You for allowing me to preach this message. Lord, may we have the mind of Christ. May we put You first. May we be filled with love and compassion and humility. May we have an obedient heart. And may we seek to lift up the name of Jesus with all we do first and foremost with all that You've given us. Lord, I pray for one that needs Jesus' as personal Savior, Lord, this morning. Perhaps one that needs a church home as we give an invitation. Father, may they come and be obedient to the call we are placing on their heart and life today in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to sing this hymn of invitation, but let me say this. If you've never trusted in Jesus Christ as personal Savior, you can do that today. All you've got to do is confess your sin, confess your need of Christ, ask Jesus to come into your heart and life to be your Savior, Lord, and He'll do it. You'll be forgiven of all sin. You can do that right now. You may want to follow the Lord in believers' baptism, as I said a second ago. Also come and join this church in full fellowship as a born-again believer. Maybe some of us want to come and kneel and pray. This invitation comes for you as we sing this hymn. Him anyone just as I am. Just as